Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and & Dragons. And Dungeons and & Dragons, cleaning the slate of all um, open major lawsuits. Okay? So this is a, a new Dungeons & Dragons event. Uh, Dungeons & Dragons, again, is you know a huge international concern. A huge in, uh, it's an industry. It's not a huge industry. Um, but it recently made uh, international headlines for two for two. Bing bang, right? Right hook, left hook. Uh, specific lawsuits that had been leveled against it. So, uh, one, the biggest one was Tracy Hicks and Margaret Weiss. You know, they had done no less than 10 or 20 novels for, for, for um, TSR. And I think they had been connected to Wizards of the Coast at some point, too. And they sued them for $10 million. That is now resolved. And, and we're, we're supposed to get a trilogy of Dragonlance novels, right? And that was settled out of court, right? So it never went to court. It didn't go through. And it only took, it took less than two months for it to get settled. In addition to that, Gale Force 9 is a company that makes merchandise in partnership with Dungeons and Dragons. They make branded merchandise. Gale Force 9 sued them, right? Now, why is this important? Well, a couple of things. One, Whenever there's a rock in the boat, you sure gonna hear it from me, right? I I really, you know, I am hyper uh, I'm hyper focused on is Dungeons and Dragons is healthy? Is it growing? Is it going in the right direction? So when there's a rock in the boat, I cover it, right? I I comment on that event. I want to be fair. When Wizards of the Coast does the right thing and succeeds in very difficult uh, accomplishments, I want to cover that too and give it to you, right? So this is me trying to do the best I can at refraction journalism, covering topics with integrity and ethics and uh, and diligence, right? This is a big, this is a big, big step, right? So um, Wizards of the Coast, Hasbro Gaming, they had to put focus and time and money and effort to fix these two major problems that the game had, right? And that tells me Hasbro does still care about Dungeons and Dragons. That's always been a question, right? Hasbro has so much on its plate, much, much bigger titles, you know, Star Wars toys and, uh, you know, uh, even My Little Pony, right, I think was making far more than Dungeons & Dragons for a long time. It had an ongoing show. People had conventions about it, you know, like, I think My Little Pony was bigger than Dungeons & Dragons, and that's all under the Hasbro umbrella, right? Hasbro recently bought um, Power Rangers. Like, they bought Power Rangers, like, outright. Right? Like, that's huge. It was like hundreds of millions of dollars, right? So they got a lot on their plate. So the fact that they took the time to, you know, put people and time and effort and money on these problems and get them solved and get them going in the right direction. Hasbro did it right. Wizards of the Coast did it right. I'm very grateful and very thankful to them, right? And I don't for a second ta um, take for granted the stewardship of the Dungeons & Dragons title, right? There's things I would really like to be done differently, but at the end of the day, I don't ever want it to be said that I didn't see the hard work, the guardianship, the stewardship that Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro Gaming exhibits over Dungeons & Dragons. So I'm really glad that, you know, uh, there's some peace between uh, Dungeons, between Wizards of the Coast and Tracy Hickman and, um, and Margaret Weiss. I'm also very glad that here was a vendor who was very upset with Wizards of the Coast to the point where they went to court. Now all that's settled, and that tells Gale Force Nine, and that tells you know I think it's a Beetle and the Bard, uh, like you know there's there's a whole bunch of of um, merchandisers who do merchandise in combination with Dungeons and Dragons, and I want all of that to grow because if there's a lot of money on the merch side, that makes the game healthier. I, I'm very convinced of that. Right, the more money involved, the less likely it is that Wizards of the Coast employees and actually. Wizards of the Close employees are right now, to my knowledge, one of maybe three companies in the industry that isn't saying tabletop role-playing game designers are underpaid and can't make a living and can't make enough to support a family, right? So all that's really good, and I'm really, really excited and happy and thankful to Wizards of the Coast and for Hasbro Gaming for taking care of these problems that were right out in the open. And I think a ton of uh, Dungeons & Dragons commentators talked about the... Um, the lawsuits, but I didn't hear many people at all come back and say, "Let's talk about the resolution." And this, and it, that's the other thing too, is we live in a very divided world. Partisanship is on the rise, division is on the rise. So by getting this done and making peace with these, with, you know, with 
these people before there was a before he, this had to go before juries and all that kind of thing. I'm really glad. I'm really glad. You know, I think they they solved it in like the arbitration uh, round or you know very early on, and I, I'm super glad to hear that. And uh, and I'm also glad that Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro Gaming are concerned about the the public view of Dungeons and Dragons. So all that's good. All that's my opinion. Uh, I'm really curious. What do you think? Do you think that the closing of these lawsuits is evidence for or against the rumors that Dungeons and Dragons will get sold uh, within the next year or two and that Hasbro is positioning it to be sold. Those rumors started back in 2020. I think some of the best coverage on it was done by Dungeon Craft. Uh, Professor Dungeon Master went into it pretty pretty deeply. Uh, he uh, Nerd Immersion also talked about it. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.